Hey everybody, Jeremy here with Muddy Boots Outdoors. I just want to give all of you guys, my viewers, anybody who's watching now, anybody a potential subscriber or my current subscribers, just an overview of what I've been up to. Um, I have been out fishing. I have been doing some outdoor stuff. Go ahead and check out that video on the uh, the hunting out in the woods. I found a legal pot farm. But today we are going to kind of give a, an overview of the work that I've done on the boat. Uh, I was going to do a lot of videos on it, but uh, with having a newborn child, uh, trying to do all my other videos, this one I've been just trying to get done so I can get out on the water. But let's go ahead and take a look at everything that I've been done here so far. Right now I've got the front of the bow here exposed, so I put in three various hatches. Okay, now these have already been primered. Uh, they will still need to be painted. Um, but so what I did is I went ahead and I used three quarter inch PVC board. It's all been glued in with, uh, that's what this brown material here is, glued in with glass filler. And then I've uh, kind of foamed in various uh, parts of it. Now I do have, as you can see, I do have power. This is where my electrical spot will be. This will be for storage. And then this hatch will be for additional storage. Um, what I plan on doing for that part is taking some more PVC board. This is just quarter inch thick, and then this is just for my stabilizer. So what I'll be able to do here is actually set my casting deck that I'm making on this, and then my hatch lids will be on here too. Let me grab one of my hatch lids so you can see what I'm talking about. Looks like I only have part of it, but as we can see, snug fit. So everything is fit to really be snug in there. So my hatch lids, once I have the actual final deck on here, will sit in here like this. These are waterproof. They will be waterproofed underneath, and it will form an impenetrable seal so no water gets in there, just in case that the boat was to get swamped or I accidentally almost sank it, which hopefully those things don't happen. Uh, but well, I'll have one here. This will be specifically just for electronics. I'll have all my switches in here for lights, uh, uh, bow lights, uh, if I do decide to put on uh, lights inside the actual flooring, uh, it will have for bilge pump. If you want to put an aerator in, I could do that. It'll have it in there along with my bus bar and fuse block will also be in there along with the battery. And this storage box will be simply for storage. I can have whatever I want in here. Life vest, rope, um, tackle boxes if I need to, um, and the the rear and the stern part of it, uh, that will actually have tools in there in case I need to do any uh, engine work out there on the fly on the water. Now this front storage is just going to be an eight inch hole with a seal on it. Let me grab that. So, and it will be mounted like this. Now I could have actually put in another square box in here, but what I was afraid of doing was getting a size, because I still have my rails that need to go on here, and the rails actually stick out a little bit, and I didn't want the lids to hit the rails, preventing it to actually be open. But what will, what, what will get stored in here will be rope, anchor, um, uh, anything that I, I might need, but this room is actually quite large. So we can take another look there. So as you can see, this whole area is quite large and that little eight inch cutout sits in there and then you've got all kinds of room in here to do whatever. And I mean, I could still mount this up and more here wise. I think I'm gonna try to mount it back here just in case if there was ever like, oh, I found a smaller hatch lid, I wanted to put that in there, I could cut it out and set that in if it you know doesn't interfere with being open and actually you know give a little larger room. But in here you can still reach in. I have a grapple anchor that's going to go in there, which is will fit perfectly. Now inside each one of these boxes they have been fiberglass and they were fiberglassed with uh, biaxial cloth. So that is where they have fiberglass mat on the back, stitch cloth on top. Uh, so they were fiberglassed in with that. These front part of these boxes are actually Kuza board. That's why you can see the difference in the color. We've got a darker between the white and I just, I had leftover board that I didn't want to waste and the stuff is very expensive and fiberglass takes to this very, very well. It is 
pretty much good to go. Um, but it got two coats of just polyester resin. Uh, the one was the initial of glassing the actual cloth in, and then the secondary one was once it had the initial had kicked, secondary filled in any extra holes, kind of smoothed things out. If there were any imperfections, I could have sanded it and then reglassed in there. Now what I did do is down these sides here, I did not want to waste any space in this at all because technically I say boat, other people see a big canoe but I wanted this to be as versatile as possible. So I put as much storage in there as I could. I ran power and electric, electric to it. And on top of it, I have rod storage. So not only do I have rod storage in here, enough for four rods, two on each side, I have rod cup holders that will be mounted in these areas here. Let me grab one of those. So I have two of these rod cup holders that will be mounted into here. Now I'd have to trim out a little bit of this foam and stuff to actually get them in there. But these ones are zero degrees directly straight up. So when you're fishing, I'm tired, I'm going to set it down, get it in there. Also, if you got some, you know, some drinks, let's say some sodas, you know, because you're out on the water, you're operating watercraft, so we've got some sodas, you got a place to put them. What I also have for the stern of the boat is I have two 30 degree angle rod holders. So that way, if you're cruising along, you don't want to slide them in here. You need quick access to them. You can drop them in that, take off and go, which will be fairly nice. Now, what I also did do is I'm leaving an access panel up here. So this, it's not finished, but when I am finished, this will actually be able to fold down which will give you access to more power here. It's also been foamed in, all of this is foamed in, and the bow lights for the nav lights will be in here so they can be wired in. But the nose cap, which will go over that, will kind of hide that in, but if need to, you need to do some work on that, you'll be able to take it out, pull it out. This will fold over there wise, and then you can do the work that you need. And that could be whether you want to change out lights, add something to it you got the power in there what i am going to do though for my storage boxes is i've got these magnetic bars and i saw this and i thought it was kind of cool because i thought like oh man i can run power into these and then you can just turn on your hatch lights when you need to and you want to you're out night fishing or i'm out night fishing whatever you know and i need to get in there and i need to see what i'm doing i don't want to use the flashlight well, I thought about wiring actual lights in there, and then I'm like, well, but then they're no longer waterproof. You know, if water gets in there, then it's done. So I thought of something else. Found these little magnetic bars. I can mount these bars in here, either like so, or with this one, I can mount it in vertically. I found a light at Home Depot. It is a waterproof light for damp conditions. It's magnetic, it's LED, it's USB charged. On my electrical switch, I have a USB port. So I can charge that light, if need be, off my actual battery. However, I can mount these lights in here and turn them on, leave them mounted in, or if need be, I need to do some engine work and it's getting dark and I'm stuck out on the water, I can use that light so I can be able to see. But this is a way that I can use the lights without draining the battery at the same time because if I had actual other lights in here, when I'd switch them on, all the hatch lights would come on when I only need the one. On top of it, if I'm fishing late at night, that extra light is actually gonna cause my night vision to be night blind. So it's a little other thing that I did there to kind of help myself out. Now, let's move on here to the flooring. So this is also PVC board. Underneath the PVC board, I have the quarter inch board too. Now what I did for here, as you can see, this is actually what the decking will be. Now this is not finished, it's not glassed in. This is just so you guys can see what I'm doing. But I will have an open floor. There will be rod holders mounted in here to hold your rods up. I've got a couple of those. This is one of the rod holders. So it will get mounted here in the side. Simple unhook, unlatch, that will hold everything in while you're running and gunning, or I will also have the rod holders in the back there. 
but the floor here has been fiberglass. I still have to lay my final fiberglass in, but as you can see, I've got the sides primered. Uh, I will still need to do the final fiberglassing, but if you're wondering why do I have this big hole back here? What is up with that big hole? Well, I try to think of the best way to do this. So I got a six gallon gas tank, and I wanted this mounted to where my fuel line will run straight back to it, and I have my gas hole cap, couldn't think of the word, on the same side as my vehicle. So when I pull in to get gas for my trip, I don't have to pull this out and switch it around. But the nice thing is, is now that for whatever reason, because I have a two-stroke outboard, say I upgraded, I sell this, someone else has a four-stroke, they upgraded. This does not have to be cut out because if, if not, this would have been an enclosed tank. But, and I couldn't find a lid big enough for me to be able to do that. So this is what I came up with. However, you can simply pull it out. This is how you can fuel it. You can connect your fuel line, which is also, as we can see here, and this board that I have here for my decking is three quarter inch uh, Nitacore. Now this is, uh, it's, you can't really see here, but here you wise you can. So this is actually honeycombed plastic. And this is already uh, pre-rigged for fiberglass. That's that little cloth material you'll see here. So I, uh, this is ready to be fiberglassed right now. But as we take a look in here, we can see that I drilled a hole and I put PVC pipe in there. That PVC pipe is for the actual fuel line. So now I can run the fuel line going all the way through and I'll have a little bit of extra to connect in here. So when I slide this in and out, and that's why this is cut out the way it is. So I can slide this out there, it stops. It will not go up any higher. I can connect fuel line, slide this back in. The hole does come all the way through, back here to the transom. And that's where your primer bulb, uh, fuel filter will all be, and I can connect directly to the outboard. As we can see here, same principle as up in the bow. You got the quarter inch thick PVC board. Now, this has all been foamed in, okay? We got foam in there. I will have my 30-degree uh, rod holders here and here. I will also be able, if wanted, to install two more rod holders, but uh, instead of 30-degree, I would do them at 15-degree, and they would be here in the front. So I'm leaving myself a little bit of options there if I want some more customization. Um, Say if uh, me and a buddy are out fishing, me and Katie are out fishing. Um, here in Illinois, it's uh, two line, two pole. For the most part, um, on most of your public areas, if you're on a private, you can do whatever you want. Um, so, however, if I've got my two poles, she has her two poles, and we're running, now all four poles can be back here. No big deal. Or I also have the two up front, so that works out too. Uh, as we can see here, this back area, which has also already been fiberglassed in, this has all been primered. It is ready to paint. Uh, I'm going to wait for painting until the very end. Um, this will be for tool storage, uh, an anchor, uh, some more rope, and, and probably some other fishing stuff. Trot lines. Um, yeah, probably just trot line. But that is... Oh, and I forgot. We do have power here ran to for the uh, bilge pump, and I did get an automatic bilge. I also, underneath all this floor, so if I do get any water up in the nose, because that's where it is going to be open type of deal. So that water, I actually have a tunnel going through the middle of all this floor all the way up to the nose with a hole down here that will be able to be sealed or removed. So if I take on some water, I can't see it now because I still have to drill the hole, I can pull this plug out, that water can come up and drain, my automatic bilge will pump it out. And then it, um, also I have the uh, hole down there at the bottom of the transom for whenever I'm done, I can open it, let everything drain out. Should be no big deal. Um, but that is it so far, guys. Uh, all that's really left is for me to finish up fiberglass in the main decks and the floor and then going through and painting. Um, stay tuned. I hope you like. Don't forget, like and subscribe.